Hi everyone. This is your Kid Stuff See and Read video book. Before we begin your first Transformers read-along story, Jaws of Terror, you are going to see and learn some words that will help you read and understand what is happening in the story. Here's your first word. Cocoon. A cocoon is a covering to protect certain baby insects while they are growing. Caterpillars make their own cocoons while they are growing and changing into butterflies. Dinobots grow in cocoons too. Try this one. It's iceberg. An iceberg is a large floating mountain of ice. What you see above the water is only a very small part of the iceberg. Most of it is underwater. Your next words are ice cap. An ice cap is a wide, thick, flat sheet of ice. Ice caps are usually found at the North and South Poles. Here's your next word, plateau. A plateau is a flat area of high land. It looks almost like a mountain with the top cut off. Your last word is vibrations. Vibrations are very quick movements back and forth. The ground can vibrate after an earthquake, or a violin string can vibrate after it is plucked. Now that you know all these words, you're ready to begin your first Transformer story by reading along with the words at the bottom of the screen. Here we go with... Three thunderous explosions ripped through the air, shattering the stillness of the high desert plateau and causing the earth to shudder. From deep inside the underground Decepticon headquarters, Soundwave, aide to Megatron, the evil Decepticon leader, rushed to the surface to find out what had happened. The radar screens had not revealed any attacking Autobots. What can be going on? Wondered Soundwave in confusion. Has our supply of precious fuel accidentally exploded? We have so little now. Outside, Soundwave found Megatron standing, holding his red-hot fusion cannon. Around him lay the twisted, smoking remains of Shockwave, the Decepticon military operations commander. We destroyed Shockwave, Master. Soundwave exclaimed with horror. Megatron whirled and faced Soundwave. Do you want to be next? He snarled fiercely. Soundwave backed away slowly, shaking his head from side to side. Oh, I don't think so, Master. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased with the way my minutes are put together, just as they are. Megatron laughed contemptuously <laughs> and said, Don't get your cassette all snarled up then. I haven't destroyed Shockwave yet. This was only a mock-up, a model of him. Next time it will be for real. I'll punish him by destroying him. Then he will never be put back together. He will never again dare try to take over the command of the Decepticons from me. If you use his own power against him, I need logic and reasoning. You wouldn't have to destroy him at all. This enraged Megatron, so that he aimed his fusion cannon at Soundwave's feet and tore up the ground around him. Soundwave slowly opened his eyes as he checked his parts for damage. He didn't dare look at Megatron. But the Decepticon leader snarled, What do you mean by that? Nothing, mighty Megatron. Soundwave's voice squeaked. Really? Nothing at all. Tell me now! 
demanded Megatron as he raised his cannon again. The words spilled out of Soundwave in a torrent. Well, Master, if you were to find a new source of oil to supply you with Decepticon warriors, then Shockwave would lose the power he's gaining over them. They would no longer be loyal to him and would again be under your control. If we ever hope to return to Cybertron and finally defeat the Autobots, we must have more and more of that precious fuel. Shockwave has promised to deliver that oil to the Decepticons. So have I! Megatron exclaimed furiously. But he's promised that the oil more often and in greater amounts. He says your profits are not reliable, that you fly into rages too much. Ah! Megatron roared as he dug more trenches with his cannon. Meanwhile, flying north in a slow formation, a large Dinobot group was making its way toward Autobot headquarters. Hours before, they had left the safety of their recovery base hundreds of miles below the Earth's surface. That underground base was a steamy jungle world, covered with the tar pits and bubbling oil that had preserved them for millions of years. Far above that jungle world, on the Earth's surface, lay the Antarctic ice cap. The Dinobots' progress was now being monitored in the Autobot Command Center by Optimus Prime, the powerful, wise, and just leader of the Autobots, as he watched over the shoulder of his aide, Prowl. Prowl reported, Things are looking good, Chief. The Dinobots are approaching the halfway point now. Wait a minute. What's that? Decepticons. Optimus Prime noted grimly. The Decepticon superjets, led by Starscream, ripped through the surprise Dinobot formation, releasing a hail of missiles and cluster bombs. Null rays lit up the sky as the Dinobot flight broke apart and scattered, planning to regroup a distance away. Slag, one of those scattering Dinobots, angrily headed away from the battle and decided to take his chances returning to the recovery base alone. He muttered to himself, well, That's typical of the other Dinobots. I told them that a large formation was a perfect target for a Decepticon attack, but nobody paid any attention to me. Well, they're paying for it now, but good. I went along with their plan, even though I didn't agree. Now, I'll go it alone. I can take care of myself. But as Slag moved into the shadow of the night side of Earth, he didn't notice the Decepticon warrior, Ramjet, coming at him, bearing down at top speed. When Slag finally saw the Decepticon, it was too late. He swung around and shot out a stream of 3,000 degree fire from his flamethrower. But it was useless. Ramjet plowed into him with a tremendous grinding force, ripping a hole in his side. At the Autobot Command Center, Prowl pointed to the screen, surprised and puzzled, as he told Optimus Prime, Look, Chief, the Decepticons are breaking off the battle and leaving, and all the Dinobots seem to be getting back into formation. Except Slag. Optimus Prime studied the screen and nodded. Slag's probably been damaged. Send him back to the recovery base. Ratchet can repair him there. Badly damaged, Slag descended toward a large crack in the ice sheet covering the frozen continent of Antarctica. He circled once, then swooped down, disappearing inside the crack's sheer walls. Meanwhile, at Decepticon headquarters, two pairs of eyes were fixed on the computer screen. Did you get a fix on where he went in, you tape-filled idiot? Megatron shouted at Soundwave. Yes, Master. Soundwave assured him. The computer should give us an internal fix of the target any minute now. It had better! 
or your metal hide will be rusting out there on that ice sooner than you think. That Dinobot should give us the exact location of the Autobot recovery base and their oil supply. There it is, Master. I have a fix of the target. We must set the boring bit at an angle of 30 degrees. Excellent! Megatron replied as he gleefully pushed the activator lever of the thermal borer forward. Now we'll find out exactly where the Autobot oil is located. Then we'll go in and grab it for ourselves. We'll let the Autobots provide the very fuel I need to destroy them. Then I shall rule supreme over the Decepticons, taking away Shockwave's control forever. <laughs> The heat of the thermal borer opened a hole in the ice. Then, hissing and steaming, it disappeared below the surface. Inside the Decepticon thermal borer, Soundwave kept a sharp eye on the sonar readout monitor. The pinging sound of the sonar's electronic search filled the command cabin as the borer melted its way deeper and deeper into the ice. They're down here somewhere, Master. Soundwave assured Megatron. They'd better be. Megatron said in a hard, even tone. Don't worry, Master. I'm sure the Autobots don't suspect a thing. Soundwave pointed out. Optimus Prime is too stupid to realize that our attack on the Dinobots was deliberately planned to damage one of them so it would return to its base and we could follow it. The sonar pinging speeded up, then suddenly stopped. Soundwave announced with satisfaction. We found it, Master. The Dinobot base and their fuel supply. Deep under the ice, the thermal borer poked its nose through the ceiling of the cavernous recovery base. Alarms went off, filling every corner of the cavern. Pull back! Megatron ordered. At the controls, Soundwave managed to slide the thermal borer away, but not before the Autobot ratchet fired a small electronic device that attached itself to the borer's hull. With the Decepticons gone from the Autobot underground jungle base, Ratchet returned to his work on Slag, trying to repair the damage done by Ramjet. The Decepticon warrior had done a great deal of damage, so the job was taking time, too much time. This annoyed Ratchet, because it was taking him away from his important job of reactivating the Dinobots, still locked in their tar cocoons. They were needed to join the Autobot ranks. Meanwhile, back at the Autobot Command Center, Prowl observed to Optimus Prime, It looks peaceful enough now, Chief. Why, it's been days since we detected and scared away that Decepticon Thermobore. Yes, but we haven't seen the end of Decepticon Evil. Optimus Prime pointed out. Their devilish plans have no limits. Well, I wouldn't worry about their finding the recovery base again, Chief. Ratchet reported that the memory scrambler mine he attached to their borer should have wiped out our base's location out of their computer's memory banks for good. Back at Decepticon headquarters, Soundwave pointed proudly at the numbers on the computer screen and gloated, Was I right, Viking Megatron, or what? There they are. Big as alive. All the coordinates giving us the location of the Autobot bases. Autobots are such fools. Megatron sneered. Such inferior fools. It's only right that they should be destroyed. But they will be bastard. They can't know that our new data blocking shield has made their memory scrambler mine useless. We now have their base's location locked 
in our computers every night. Transfer the coordinates to the computer controls of the Crusher! Ordered Megatron. Uh, Master, I think it would make more sense and be safer and stickier to siphon off the Autobot bases for a supply with an underground laser trap. Don't you dare think, you mechanical fool! I do the thinking, you do the working! Megatron snapped at Soundwave. I haven't got time for such foolishness! That would take too long! Victory is within our grasp! I will not wait! I want it all! Now! And when I've got it, perhaps I'll destroy Shockwave anyway! Along with the Autobots! The Decepticon Ice Crusher was huge. Driven by powerful fusion engines, it was a frightening piece of machinery. Its tremendous tracks could carry it over any obstacle. But it was its jaws that caused the most fear. Those towering, gleaming, razor-sharp teeth were made of the metal Tetranite and had the power to chew up anything in their path. Megatron loved the Crusher. He patted its cold, hard metal as he ordered, Prepare to board and fire up the engine, Soundwave. Yes, The Crusher's engines burst into life with a violent roar and lifted it into the sky. Within hours, the continent of Antarctica was in sight. Landing on the Ross Ice Shelf, the Crusher's jaws began to turn. The monster inched forward with a deafening sound. The Ice Shelf was being cut apart, creating huge new icebergs that immediately plunged into the freezing sea. Oceans were raised, flooding cities many miles north of Antarctica. Readouts of the Crusher's approach appeared on the computers at Autobot Command Headquarters. What, what are we, we gonna, gonna do, do Chief? Chief? Prowl asked Optimus Prime. Although he already knew, there was little the noble Autobot leader could do from so far away. Launch all super jets immediately, Prowl. I'm, I'm afraid there's not much we can do, but we must try. Megatron cannot be allowed to pursue his evil ways without anyone trying to stop him. As the Decepticon Crusher approached the underground Autobot base, its vibrations reached far below the Earth's surface, making it difficult for Ratchet to keep his balance as he finished working on Slag. As the ground began to move more violently beneath their feet, Ratchet and Slag ran quickly for a safer spot. But as they ran, they noticed something strange happening in the tar pits. The terrible vibrations were causing the tar pits to steam and erupt. The swampy oil beneath the surface began to bubble and rise. Moments later, the crusher burst into the cavern as Soundwave exclaimed excitedly, I told you! Brute force and power! Destruction! That's the way of the universe! Logic and reasoning are for whips! Megatron growled as he paced the bridge, but unknown to Megatron, the Crusher's terrible vibrations had unleashed long hidden forces far below the steamy jungle. Breaking out of their tar pit prisons, hundreds of Dinobots began rising to the surface out of the black ooze of time. Soundwave spotted them first. Oh, my goodness, Master. We're done for now, for sure. Stop running off of the tape, you mecha wimp! cried Megatron as he turned the full might of his fusion cannon on the Dinobots. He blasted a few back into the tar pit grave in a last desperate attack, just as Slag and Ratchet joined the Dinobot charge. The attack ripped apart the Crusher at the same moment that Megatron and Soundwave rocketed away in the escape pod until another day. And the battle continues.
That was an exciting Transformers story, wasn't it? Now, let's see how much you remember about Jaws of Terror with this remembering game. Here's how it works. Here's a question about the story. Why did Megatron want to destroy Shockwave? Can you remember the answer? Watch the screen now for three answers and see if you can remember the correct one. Did Megatron want to destroy Shockwave because Shockwave fired Megatron's fusion cannon? Or is the answer two? Shockwave was trying to take command of the Decepticons. Or three, Shockwave was really an Autobot spy. Do you remember the answer to why Megatron wanted to destroy Shockwave? The answer is two. Shockwave was trying to take command of the Decepticons. Here's the next question in the remembering game. Where was the Dinobots recovery base? Was the recovery base one in an underground jungle below the Antarctic ice cap? Or was the base on two, Cybertron? Or was it three on a high desert plateau? If you remembered that the answer was one, you would be correct. The Dinobots recovery base was in an underground jungle below the Antarctic ice cap. Try this one. Why did Slag return to the Autobot base? One, did he return because he was afraid of the Decepticons? Or two, because the other Dinobots wouldn't take orders from him? Or three, to repair a hole in his side? The answer is three. Slag returned to the Autobot base so that Ratchet could repair a hole in his side. Here's the next question. What happened when Megatron's crusher cut apart the ice shelf? Is the answer one, it sent icebergs into the sea? Or is it two, the ice melted? Or is it three, the crusher sank? Did you remember that when Megatron's crusher cut apart the ice shelf, it sent icebergs into the sea? So, the answer is one. Here's your last question. How did Megatron and Soundwave escape when the crusher was destroyed? Is the answer one? They rocketed away in their escape pod? Is it two, they ran through the jungle? Or is it three, they hid in the tar pits? Did you remember that Megatron and Soundwave escaped by rocketing away in their escape pod? So the answer is one. Now that you did so well on that story, we'll go on to your next exciting Transformer adventure, Slaves of the Insecticons. But first, let's look at some new words that will help you read and understand this story. Your first new word is camouflage. To camouflage something means to hide or cover it in order to change the way it looks. Soldiers in wars put leaves and branches in their helmets to camouflage themselves as they moved through jungles. Your next word is foothills. Foothills are hills at the bottom of other higher hills or mountains. Here's a hard word. Listen carefully. Paralyzed. Someone who is paralyzed is unable to move or feel. People can become paralyzed from an accident or illness. Your next new words are Rainforest. A rainforest is a thick jungle in a very hot country where a lot of rain falls. 
The last word is zombie. A zombie is a person who is supposed to have been brought back from the dead. Zombies are not real people, but are only written about in stories. Now that you've learned all these words, camouflage, foothills, paralyzed, rainforest, and zombie, you're ready to begin the next Transformers story. Read along with the words at the bottom of the screen as we begin... Slaves of the Insecticons! The Autobot Superjet flight roared into the western Pacific sky as the huge red fireball that was the sun began slipping quickly below the horizon. The Superjets had refueled from their supply base on the island of Guam and were now ready to continue patrolling. This continuous patrolling was necessary to prevent the evil Decepticons from carrying out their deadly aims, the destruction of the Autobots, the occupation of Earth, and the conquest of the universe. Skyfire, the Autobot flight leader, ordered the other super jets to test fire their weapons. Once that was done, things settled into a peaceful routine patrol. However, in the western sky, Skywarp, the sneaky Decepticon warrior, had plans to interrupt that peaceful patrol. He and two other Decepticon warriors came hurtling out of the setting sun in a surprise attack, blasting the Autobots with null rays and machine gun fire. Then, before the Autobots could react, they broke off the action and streaked away to the east. Skyfire immediately turned east and gave chase. In the dimness of the Autobot Command Center, there was puzzled reaction to the strange Decepticon behavior. The glowing green monitor screens that had been following the battle told Optimus Prime, the noble and fearless Autobot leader, what was happening, but not why it was happening. Prowl, Optimus Prime's right-hand robot, was just as confused as he pointed out, The Decepticons have fired their engines afterburners. Shall I order Skyfire to do the same and continue the chase? Optimus Prime thought for a moment, then replied, No, Prowl. Let them go. Fuel is too precious for us to burn it up on a useless chase. We need to figure out what the Decepticons are up to first, or we might be drawn into a trap of some sort. Well, there's one thing we know for certain, Prowl continued. This pattern of attacking and then running is becoming a common occurrence in countries bordering on the Pacific Ocean. What could be the Decepticons' reasoning? The following day, the Decepticons once again struck an Autobot patrol in their usual confusing fashion. This time, southeast of the Pacific island of Sumatra. Led by the warrior Starscream, the Decepticons blew two Autobot superjets out of the sky, then turned tail and disappeared into the western foothills of the Himalaya Mountains. The Autobots took off in hot pursuit. Although these strange actions held no reason for the Autobots, they had a clear purpose for the Decepticons, to keep prying Autobot eyes away from the island of Buru. Anyone flying quickly over Buru would see nothing more than a tropical rainforest-covered dot in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. Anyone could fly over it a hundred times and never give it a second glance. But the Decepticons were taking no chances of anyone coming there even once, for Buru was a gold mine, or perhaps more accurately, an oil mine. For the Decepticons, the accidental discovery of an oil supply on Buru was a great boost to their evil plans. And the fact that the oil was especially pure and plentiful thrilled the Decepticons beyond their wildest imagination. Because that fuel meant life to the Decepticons, because it meant more wars and more conquests, the Decepticons had eagerly hacked out a mining camp in the steaming green jungle that covered the island. 
It had been a dangerous and difficult job, one that had been assigned to those Decepticons most able to stand the jungle's dirt and smells. It had been assigned to the Insecticons. It was the Insecticons who had defeated the local natives and turned them into slaves. It was the Insecticons who had set up the oil mining operation on Buru. As the mines pumped oil to the surface, they were pumping new life into the Decepticon plans to conquer the universe. Like any mining town in such a faraway location, the one on Buru was a rough and dangerous place. However, activity flowed peacefully and without interruption because the Insecticon guards, led by Venom, were always on patrol to make certain of it. All the work was carried out by the island natives and any stray Autobots that had been captured by the Decepticons. On the surface, the workers appeared to be normal and content as they went about their work. However, on closer inspection, it was clear that they had been turned into zombie-like creatures. They carried out orders without question because their willpower and resistance had been crushed, paralyzed by the poisonous fluid injected into them by Insecticon stingers. It was a fluid so powerful that it turned both humans and Autobots into powerless slaves. Meanwhile, at the Decepticon Underground Weapons Development Center, Megatron, the evil Decepticon leader, was inspecting the results of his advanced engineering, a monstrous self-contained oil driller and transporter. Soundwave, his aide, was puzzled at the leaves and branches mounted on top of the transporter. What's all that jungle stuff on top of it for, Master? Soundwave asked. Megatron snarled back. You tape filled nitwit! That's camouflage! What for? Because we're going to Buru! The oil isn't being produced fast enough! I want more oil! Now! I want it so I can crush Optimus Prime and the Autobots once and for all! While Megatron was planning his mission to Buru, Optimus Prime was waiting at the Autobot base for word from his scout, Bumblebee. The speedy scout had been out on a long-range patrol in the southwestern Pacific. He was now days overdue back at base. Prowl had been monitoring the radio for days with no word. Now, as he removed his headset, he shook his head at Optimus Prime and reported, Still nothing, Chief. And there would be no word either, for Bumblebee had been captured and was now a slave of the Insecticons. As the huge Decepticon oil driller and transporter circled over Buru, Soundwave received an urgent message from the island. Jumping up quickly, he announced to Megatron, has refused to pump the oil any faster. He says it's impossible. Megatron flew into a rage. Stop, miserable Insecticon! How dare he challenge my authority! I'm Megatron, after all! Mighty leader of the Decepticons! And the Insecticons! Once the transporter had landed and was safely camouflaged in the jungle, Venom came on board and faced Megatron on the command deck. Seeing the deadly glare in the Insecticon leader's eyes, Megatron whispered to Soundwave. You talk to him. You seem to have a way with insects. What's wrong with him anyway? A suspicious master. Soundwave whispered back, never taking his eyes off Venom, who continued to stare at them. He probably thinks you want to take away his command. 
Megatron snarled, raising his voice. Well, I'm the leader around here, and I'll decide what... Megatron was suddenly interrupted by the rigging of the emergency alarm, indicating an urgent message coming in. Soundwave switched on the monitor, then shouted... Should we blast the call of the sky? No. Megatron answered with an evil grin. Let them come on in. Venom can put them to work also. <laughs> the Buru mining camp appeared normal to Optimus Prime and Prowl as they landed in the jungle clearing. There were no Insecticons, no Decepticon machinery, no Autobot slaves, only native workers busily going about their work. It looked no different than other oil mining camps Optimus Prime had seen around the Earth. The two brave Autobots entered the camp cautiously. All was not right, of course, and Prowl's sixth sense told him so before either he or Optimus Prime really saw it. This place smells of Decepticon evil to me, Chief. I feel it in my rivets so strongly, I'd almost be willing to bet Megatron himself isn't too far off. You have an uncanny sense, Prowl, but I... Optimus Prime stopped. Then, pointing to one of the workers, he whispered to Prowl. Say, did you see the eyes on that man? And that one too. It's the it work of the Insecticons! Prowl hollered. It's the fluid from their deadly stingers. These people are all slaves. And look, Bumblebee is too! With that, the Insecticon warriors broke cover, using their electric blasters and cannons to launch an attack against the two Autobots. In the control room, on the oil transporter, Megatron roared with amusement as he watched Optimus Prime and Prowl trying to beat back the Insecticon attack. <laughs> Not only does Optimus Prime have to battle the Insecticons, but he'll also have to deal with Venom's anger over anyone meddling in his mining operations! That should keep him busy for a while, Master. Soundwave added, trying to imitate Megatron's evil grin. Should we join in now, Master? Or wait until the Autobot have been weakened? Not yet, Megatron said, turning to the controls. There's plenty of time and opportunity to crush the great Optimus Prime. Right now, I want more oil, more and more. Once that fuel is mine, we will destroy the Autobots. Totally! <laughs> the huge turbine fans on the transporter began to turn slowly at first as the engines burst into life. They soon picked up speed, rotating faster and faster until the oil transporter lifted and hovered over the jungle. The noise of the transporter was tremendous as it plowed into the thick jungle and disappeared, becoming part of that very jungle through its camouflage. On the command deck, Megatron ordered... Drills! Drills now! Soundwave pressed the button, activating the giant laser borers. In moments, they were punching their way into the forest floor, seeking the reservoir of oil below the surface. Meanwhile, back at the mining camp, Prowl told Optimus Prime urgently, Chief, we can't hold our position here much longer. What should we do? Don't worry, Prowl. I plan for an emergency like this. I realized we were going to search a jungle area, so I came prepared with backup forces. And here they are now. Optimus Prime pointed up to the sky. The Dinobots! Prowl exclaimed with relief. 
The Dinobots, swept in low and slow, joining the battle and blasting the Insecticons with missiles and thermal bombs. Once they landed, the Dinobots tossed aside the Insecticons with flicks of their armored tails, then crushed them underfoot. As the Insecticons were going down to defeat, Prowl noticed a heat sensor readout on his portable scanner. He called to Optimus Prime. Look, what? Chief. Only turbine, turbine fans, fans would be producing, producing such heat. Turbine, turbine fans, fans from an oil transporter. Optimus Prime nodded. That means Megatron is nearby. We'll take care of him first, then see about rescuing Bumblebee. Meanwhile, on board the transporter, Megatron was concerned only for his own selfish desire for oil. Ma! 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 He shouted to Soundwave. But master, it Soundwave cried in alarm. The turbines are straining to bury because they are going down. Stop your whining, you cassette stuffed twerp! Look faster. Soundwave scream pointing at the monitor. Dinobots and Optimus Prime. At that moment, the transporter sank into the mud. The fans clogged, then stopped as the engines ground to a halt and exploded into flames. Hurry into the escape master. Soundwave cried urgently. I'll finish you yet, Optimus Prime! I'll return and finish you yet! Megatron roared as the mole escape pod disappeared beneath the surface into the oily ooze. And the battle continues. And we'll continue now with the remembering game to see how much you remembered from Slaves of the Insecticons. Here's your first question. Where were the Decepticons making their attacks on the Autobots? Are you thinking? Get ready now to choose your answer. Was it one over countries bordering the Pacific Ocean? Was it two? all over the universe. Or three, on the island of Buru. The answer is one. The Decepticons were making their attacks on the Autobots over countries bordering the Pacific Ocean. Here's the next question. Why were the Decepticons attacking and then running away? Was it one? to destroy as many Autobots as they could? Or two, to keep the Autobots away from the island of Buru? Or three, to hide from the Autobots? Did you remember that the answer was two? The Decepticons were attacking and running away to keep the Autobots away from the island of Buru. Try this one. Why was Buru so important to the Decepticons? Was it important because, one, the Autobots had a base on the island? Two, because Buru had a huge supply of oil? Or three, because Buru had a good jungle to hide in? Did you remember why Buru was so important to the Decepticons? It was two, because it had a huge supply of oil, and the Decepticons needed that oil to continue their evil wars. Here's your last question. How did the Insecticons turn the natives into slaves? Was it by, one, by threatening to kill them? Was it two, by injecting them with their poisoned stingers? 
Or was it three by paying the natives a lot of money? Did you remember that the Insecticons made slaves out of the natives by injecting them with poison stingers? So the answer is two. Well, you did very well today. I hope you enjoyed these two Transformers adventures. Be sure to look for more Kid Stuff, Kid Vid videos at your favorite store. Bye for now.